What's up, friends of the internet? Dana Lynn Bailey here, and I'm here to give you the baddest chest workout of your life. I'm just kidding. Guys, I, I don't wanna scare any girls away. I feel like girls are so, all right, over there. Jeez, making all this no boring Kai already. Anyway, girls, I'm not here to scare you. I feel like most girls are very terrified of chest day. And I'm here to tell you, it can enhance the boobs. Just perk them up a little bit. So, girls, this one is for you. We're training boobs today. So today's workout is a lot of supersets. This first part is actually a triset. So big thing with me, if you've been following me at all, I hate doing like one thing at a time. It's always like something mixed with something or a big tri set or a big giant set. So chest stays the same. And because I love delts and I feel like everybody loves delts, we're just gonna like just sprinkle a little delts in there. Just suck. Just like that. You just sprinkle on it. So it's chest day with a hint to delt. So this first little tri set that we're doing, we're gonna be on the cable crossover and we're stealing both sides because we are doing it together. We're gonna start with a flat. So I say flat because we're going straight across. So if you were laying on a bench, you'd be doing the flat dumbbell fly. So we're going from a flat standing cable fly right into push-ups. And then we're gonna reverse it because it's already set up for this. So we're gonna do uh, some reverse cable flies because I randomly sprinkle shoulders in, like, sprinkle them in on back day, sprinkle them in on chest day, and then they get their own damn day because they're that important to me. So cable fly to push up to reverse cable fly. All coming in on this station. So. Couple key little tips here for your cable fly. Um, big thing here that I see most people do is, not that it's wrong, it's just a different movement, is they bend their elbows and then they straighten their elbows. That's more of like a cable press. Also a very cool exercise, I like it a lot. But we're doing push-ups afterwards. So what I want you to do is, on your fly, your elbow stays in like a, just a slightly bent position and then it stays in that position that in whole entire time. So you're not bending and straightening. That's a press. We are keeping it in that fixed position and then doing that movement all throughout, keeping elbow fixed. Then we're gonna go straight down, right into push-ups. Now I give you an, we're doing like ten, four, uh, four sets, 10 to 12 of each, each exercise. I'm also a huge advocate of just going to failure, just go until you can't go anymore. I'm just hoping that you can get to 10 to 12. That's your goal is 10 to 12. But if you can do more on your push-ups, heck yeah, do them. Uh, push-ups, standard push-up. Um, I don't really need to go over too much. But uh, one thing I would like you to do is get full range. So come all the way down to the ground. This is not a push-up. We're going all the way down. I like to touch my chest to the ground, just like you would do on a bench. If you want a full rep bench, you come down, you touch that bar to your chest, and then back up. And then last but not least, we're gonna reverse the fly and hit our rear delts. Because remember, we're sprinkling, sprinkling delts. Um, I generally won't use these, so you can either take them off, or I just, so I don't have to take them off, I'll just loop it around. I do a little bit less on my reverse fly. And then we grab, grab the pulley by the balls. <laughs> Just grab them by the balls. And then we'll come over here. So you're grabbing opposite hand to opposite cable. Grab it by the balls. And same uh, as our, four, uh, our flat flies for chest, our elbows are gonna be in that fixed position and then you're just pulling out as wide as you can. So you're not bending and straightening your elbows. 
That would be a, actually that's a pretty good exercise for triceps. It's not bad, you should try it sometime. But if we wanna hit our rear delts, I'm gonna be hinged over at the hips just a little bit, keeping those elbows in that slightly fixed position, touch your hands, and then back out. Ooh, shoulders are feeling good. So we're gonna hit, the, hit those front delts along with our chest when we do it forward. Gonna hit our chest again, front delts again, and then we're gonna finish off with a little bit of rear delts. Four sets, 10 to 12, I don't know, 12, 12. You get it, I'm just talking now. I would start with benching on chest day, but decided to switch the order up. So now we're gonna get to just a, this is by itself, I know, blows my mind. If I think about it too much, I might add something to it. But we're gonna do pause, bench, press. So your pause is gonna be all the way down onto your chest, and you're gonna hold the bar still on your chest, chest for two seconds. And that's two Mississippis, not one, two, up. We're going one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and then up. A um, couple key tips here. Um, a lot of the, the flack that I usually get is like, why am I arching? Arching is actually not a bad thing. Now, normally through other kinds of lifting, like a squat, you, yeah, you don't wanna arch. You wanna keep a nice neutral spine. Deadlifting, same thing, you don't wanna like, arch your back, that would be really weird. You wanna keep a neutral spine. But those things are like top and bottom loaded. Um, especially something like top loaded, like a squat. Yeah, you don't wanna like get your spine out of alignment. Now this is not actually lo like loaded onto you. So you're not putting weight on your back. You're holding it above your chest. Now the reason why most power lifters uh, have an arch in their bench is one you're stronger that way you just you just are uh, first of all the range of motion is a little bit smaller so if range of motion is something that you really really care about then yeah keep your back completely flat on the a lot of times I'll end a set maybe we'll even do that maybe the last set will end with a flat back but whoop so if you want your back, you want full, full, full range of motion, a lot of times I'll put my feet up on the bench so that my back, no matter what, stays flat. So this, I am not the strongest from this point. Um, I also feel when my back is completely flat that I feel a lot of tension on my shoulders. So the arch actually, because you're bringing your scapulas and pretty much setting your scapulas like onto the bench, it actually keeps your elbow locked in a little bit more, which is a safer angle for your shoulder. So if you have any shoulder problems, don't watch me bench because I bench pretty wide and my elbows flare out. Uh, if you have any kind of shoulder problems, my suggestion would always be to tuck those elbows. So you'll be more of a, a nar not narrow, but you can do a slightly wider, but as you come back down, you wanna make sure, make sure I don't hit my head again. I'm gonna move this bench. As you come down, you wanna make sure you keep those elbows tucked closer to your side. Me, on the other hand, I'm out here, which is generally not the greatest for your shoulders, Luckily, I have not had any problems. I just feel strongest that way because I can flare my lats out and really push through my lats. So anyone with a really strong, strong bench usually has just as strong, maybe even stronger lats because so much of your bench press is coming from your lats. So, uh, and one more reason why 
uh, the arch. So this part is not on a, this is what I'm talking about with an arch. And my arch isn't really that crazy. My big thing here is I wanna keep my upper back, my shoulders on the, on the bench, and then my butt is on the bench. And then generally you should be able to kind of see through this side. So there should be like a little hole. Now, another reason why we do that is so that your, L, uh, your shoulder just moves through the socket a little bit more. When I'm flat, it only can go down. It like goes down and kind of like, I just think it just feels a little bit weird. But with this arch, it has more range of motion to move throughout the socket. So your rotator cuff has a little bit more movement. It's actually just honestly a safer position for your shoulder, if anything. And you just happen to be stronger from this point. And one of my things, again, you have to like go based on your goals. If, if you want to work on like f isolating your chest, if you want to just isolate your chest, well, it's not going to completely ice because you're going to be using your triceps. But if you want to focus more on your chest with a bench, then keep your back flat. Um, if you are going for strength, and power and maybe you're just a little egotistical like me and you want to put on a lot of weight um, which also builds muscle anytime you're putting a lot of weight on sometimes that will build muscle uh, yeah try arching your back um, it is not bad for you so all you idiots out there they're like why are you arching your back da -da 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 -da. You guys are probably the same people that say don't let your knees go in front of your toes <laughs> but guess what when you go up the stairs every freaking day like you walk up some stairs guess where your knee is in front of your damn toe look at it next time just look at it when you go up some steps here's a step oh my god my knee is in front of my toe and we're not talking about that today we're talking about boobs and chests so all you idiots out there that say arching is bad for you, just do a little research and then try it out. And guess what? You'll probably be a little bit stronger that way. I'm just saying. So anyway, back to business. We are doing four sets, five to six reps. Each rep is going to have a pause on the chest. So those demonstrates so, so much of the arch. I just get mad when people like try to correct like form when they really have no idea what they're talking about. Go talk to a power lifter and tell them that they should be benching with their back flat on the bench. Go, go tell them and see what happens. My guess is you get, you get beat up. <laughs> you get beat up because you're an idiot. All right. So five to six reps, pause reps. So you're going to bring it up. Now, one thing with pause reps is you kind of want to focus on the eccentric a little bit. So your net, your negative down should be a little bit slower than normal because when you get to your chest, you're going to pause one Mississippi two Mississippi and up. So instead of, uh, cause then you're going to bounce it right off your chest and it's not going to feel so good. So big thing with pause reps is the negative. So you have to go a little bit slower on the way down one two down pause because you don't want to break your sternum and then push up one two down pause don't break your sternum and up now the whole point of pause reps is you're taking that momentum a lot of times when people bench they bounce it off their chest i get it I'm trying to get heavy weights i get it i've done it a couple times or two luckily i don't really have anything to get in the way you know what? Boobs would probably help with that. Maybe like little air balloons, just a get them right off the chest. But the whole point of that, it takes that momentum out. So then one, you're not going to be doing as heavy a weight, but you're going to recruit more muscles, more muscles in from your triceps, from your chest, from your lats. And here the object is to keep, especially if you're in that arch position, is you cannot lose form. And that is going to come from keeping that back set on to the bench and your scapulas stay. So if you come down too fast, you might lose form. 
So the big thing here, you're almost concentrating on pulling the bar down instead of letting the bar come down. What I mean by that is bringing your scapulas. So you're going to like pull the bar down, bring those scapulas together and then push up. Keeping those lats really, really tight is going to be the most important thing here. So focus on pulling the bar down, keeping your lats super tight. Don't lose form. And then you're going to use your lats to push it back up five to six reps. So this, I want you to go pretty, pretty heavy. So a couple warm up sets to get to that working set range, five to six reps two second pause on each set. Ready, set, go. All right, switching gears over to incline. We got a little tricep for you. Tricep is gonna hit our upper chest, front delts, um, and then we're gonna flip around and do some couple delt exercises. So we're going an incline dumbbell press. Um, nothing too crazy there. Going for like a six to eight rep range. So you're going pretty heavy for your presses. And then once we get to flipping around, we're gonna get some lateral movements on the incline bench so i try to make everything i used to when i first started this whole program with dlb daily if you don't follow dlb daily you're missing out but i'm someone that like sets like a bunch of different things together so i get an object like an incline bench i'm like what all can i do with it and then i just mush it all into one set so we're gonna do an incline press with a incline facing Y raise. So a Y raise is hitting our shoulders. It's basically right in between a front raise, which would be like a, an I raise, they call it, if you're on an incline bench. So a front raise is straight out to your side, lateral raise, or straight out to the front. Your lateral raise is straight out to the side. A Y raise is right in between that. So you're making a Y, MCA with your hands. So the Y is because it's in between your front and your lateral, you're getting a little front, you're getting a little lateral. And then once we go into our lateral, we move out to the side, you're going to hit more of your medial head to the rear head. So you're, we're going to hit our whole entire shoulder here. So, uh, incline bench press, nothing too crazy here. Uh, the biggest thing here is just keeping the weights under the control. You'll notice so any, most of my movements, I, I don't, we have a ton of machines. I generally don't really do a whole lot of machines, maybe an incline machine once in a while, but I like just using free weights. One, you're going to just be working more of those stabilizer muscles. So anytime you're, and it also helps with like imbalances. That's like the big two key things that i like about dumbbells is the work on imbalances because whatever weight you grab so if i grab the 30s this arm has to do 30 this arm has to do 30. when you're on a machine you're generally your stronger arm might take over and that would be my right side so you might start getting the weight up but you're pushing more on one side so if you're someone that has some imbalances where you're, maybe your right arm's bigger, your right shoulder's bigger, start incorporating some more dumbbells into your workout. And then the other uh, great thing is it works on those tinier muscles, your stabilizer muscles, because you have to keep it in place. The, the machine's not doing it for you. You're, you have to keep those dumbbells so they're not wobbling all over the place. So you're gonna be working those really deep, deep, deep inner muscles, the stabilizer muscles and core as well, because core, no matter what, anytime you use dumbbells, you're gonna be working your core a little bit more. So that's just my whole thing with dumbbells. I just love them, just love them so much. Um, uh, one other key thing here, just like I talked about 
with the bench press um, is shoulder issues. If you have any kind of shoulder issues, you always wanna keep your elbows more tucked. Me, again, I, I'm kind of a wide bencher. I just started, at least with my shoulder presses, trying to start in that neutral position and then straighten up. So we're gonna, we're gonna actually start in a neutral position. I wish I, I'm gonna grab these little guys. I don't need heavy weights to demonstrate. We're gonna start in that neutral position. So my elbows are in front. And when you come up, we're just gonna, is that internally? Yeah, this is externally rotate and then internally rotate. So anytime you are externally or internally rotating that shoulder, you're gonna be developing your shoulder a little bit more. You're just strengthening that rotator cuff. So we're gonna start in that neutral grip. And when you come to the top, you're just gonna internally rotate. When you come back down, externally rotate your wrists back down. So this way is just a, a little bit safer on your shoulders than out here. You're gonna get, you're gonna feel a little bit more in your shoulders here. So if you, if you want to work a little bit more shoulder, then you can just start out here, which is also equally as good. If you wanna protect your shoulders or just be a little bit safer, then you're gonna start in that neutral grip and then up. That's like the one thing that I talk about on shoulder day and chest day is I get a lot of people with shoulder issues. Um, been very thankful not to have any yet, but those little small tweaks by keeping your elbows out in front of you, you can just save your shoulders a little bit. So this is, uh, what did I say, six to eight. Then we're gonna flip around and we're gonna go anywhere from like eight to 10. We'll start with the Y raise. So Y raise, chest is down. Elbows will be like slightly bent, kind of. They're never, I never really have them like completely straight. When you bring them up, you're just coming up into a Y. So instead of going forward here, we're just going out to the side a little bit. Ooh, this is a little heavy. You'll feel a pretty good pump. And because we're kind of like pre-exhausting our shoulders with the press, start pretty light. So get about eight to 10 Y. So Y, and then we're gonna switch to just like a, a lateral movement out to the side. Now, because we're kind of leaned over, this is also going to hit your rear delts as well. So this is gonna be more for medial to rear delts. So difference here. Y is the little front, side, front, side. Oh, I'm gonna probably have to go a little bit lighter. So Y is our front to medial heads, and then this will be medial to rear heads. Four sets, six to eight for the press, eight to 10 for the fly, or raises. So they're sort of like flies. The Y raise, lateral raise. Let's go. Back to the cables. So I'm not much of a dumbbell fly kind of person. I just don't like them. I think they're stupid. I get a better contraction. Um, it's safer on your shoulders and you get that constant tension with cables. So anytime I do flies, you're generally always gonna see me at the cable. So now we're gonna go from an incline or a low to high. So we're hitting that upper chest, those front delts. And then after that, to keep that little sprinkle and spice of shoulders, we're gonna go from an incline fly, so a low to high, right into a, a cable press. 
Generally, you shouldn't have to even move the weights because you're gonna be adding your uh, triceps into it because we'll be bending our arms because it's a press. Uh, so cable fly, super, super basic. I just really, really love uh, cable flies. The thing with uh, dumbbells, it just puts your shoulder in that like vulnerable situation where the dumbbell's like out to the side and, and I just never really liked it. Um, I've always been a big fan of pressing with dumbbells and stuff, um, just flies. I got it. I just do them on the cable. So if you don't have a cable machine and you have to do dumbbells, then it, then that's fine. That's cool. So uh, we're gonna take a couple steps out. So again, we're at the lowest setting. If you like to do these seated, you can also put a bench in here. I'm just gonna stand. Uh, I take like one or two steps out. And for all flies, I always have sort of like a little forward lean. Um, whether you put your feet together or I like to stagger them, I just feel a little bit more balanced this way. Um, and it keeps me in that uh, slightly leaned over position. So I feel a little like a little more athletic stance uh, versus this where I feel a little unstable doing that. Um, so again, elbows slightly bent. So we're, we're not bending and straightening. They stay in that slightly bent position. And you're basically doing this kind of like an underhand. And then when I get to the top, I'm doing pinkies together instead of this together. Not that this is wrong. I just like doing pin, pinkies together. So get in your spot, slightly bent arms, and then you're just coming up over your head. As long as it's up by your face, that's good. So back down, arms come out wide, and then they're coming together. So this is your fly. And then we're gonna go right into a press, which generally you're gonna come back to the middle. I am still slightly in front of the cables. You could be even with them. I'm still just slightly in front of the cables. Again, feet together, or again, I have mine staggered. And then you're just doing a simple shoulder press but with cables and then you can either do this in a neutral position mine's sort of like in the middle of both and you're just pressing up overhead focus on the negative for this one so up fast one two down slow your shoulders that was only 20 pounds. Shoulders are gonna be screaming after that. If at all you need to drop for the second one, um, normally you would think that you'd be able to press more than you fly, but because you're bringing the weights all the way up here, it's just actually adding more tension than from being down here when they're lower, it's a little less tension. You're at like maximum tension here, so the weight's gonna feel a little bit heavier. So sometimes like I'll do maybe like 30s for the fly and if I can't get more than six for the presses then I'll drop it just a little bit so four sets I don't think I set anywhere from 8 to 12 for both of them let's go final superset and we're still at the cable because I love it it's so good if you don't like cables you're stupid that was mean I'm sorry <laughs> all right so we're gonna finish off with some decline cross body I've called it cross body flies or X flies because you're basically going to be creating an X with your arms Just, it's like a superhero pose just put some like lightning bolts like behind me it'll be amazing so 
hitting that super decline fly. So we're trying to get as close to our body as possible. So instead of being like out here, I want you coming down and close to your body. And then we're gonna be switching the arm that's on top every single rep. Hello, Kaya. Kaya is practicing walking with her new knee. So the crossbody or X fly. So if our right hand comes up on top, we're gonna come back back to the back and then switch uh, so that your left's on top because you'll get a little more squeeze. No, wait, which one gets more squeeze? I don't know. I feel like the bottom one gets a little bit extra squeeze. So we're just gonna switch the hand that goes on top every single time. After we get done with our crossbody flies, then we're gonna go right into a decline press. So as we come up, we're gonna bend our elbows and then we're gonna straighten it back down. So again, not coming straight out. I want you pretty much almost leaned over. I'll show you with the cable. We're gonna bring our elbow straight back and then you're gonna push straight down and uh, well, actually you don't even have to cross. You can if you want, but elbows up and then straighten them right back down. So we'll go from a fly, bop, 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 where we're not bending our elbows, into bending our elbows. Just like that. So what it looks like with actually a cable. Uh, you're taking uh, not as much of a stance like we do with like our incline, our flat, we just are gonna go a little bit further in front of the cable, arms in that slightly, el or elbows in that slightly bent position, and you're just crossing over. So right now my left's on, on top, so when we come back, we're gonna switch, and now my right's on top. So you're just crossing over. It's just that whole cross just gets you a little extra range of motion. So this would be the fly, elbows not really bending. It's just staying in that fixed position. And then when we get to the press, now elbows are gonna go drive straight back. So those uh, scapulas come straight back, almost like you're trying to touch them together. Elbows wide, and then you're just pressing down. So elbows back, press straight down. And instead of pressing out, I want you pressing towards the floor. So elbows up and then press towards the floor. That way you're getting that like lower part of your chest. So they always thought of like upper chest, middle chest, lower chest. So this is gonna be like, if you're doing like a decline press. So these are our decline presses, but on cable. So you're hitting that lower portion of your chest and your front delt. So last thing, four sets, each one anywhere from eight to 12. I think anywhere from like eight to 10 rep range is pretty good. So eight to 10 for the first one. And then you shouldn't have to drop. You should be able to keep the same weight because then we're just gonna bend our elbows, try to get eight to 10 more with the presses. guys that is it um good luck with the workout thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video bleh, if you like this video make sure you like it hit that subscribe button so you never miss another video from me and kaya she's very exciting i know put jazz hands next to her so Alright guys, until next time, we'll see you later.